Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Rogue Legacy, the official release from Cellar Door Games. I looked at this game a little while ago on my channel and even managed to beat the castle boss. But needless to say, it's reached official release and as such has gotten considerably harder. There are new enemies, new areas, and just... Oh god, I have no idea what to expect for the grand majority of it. Uh. So, we're going to start off with the same journal that we found last time, the prince first entering the castle. He needs to save his father from an ailment caused by an assassin, also known as Sword Wounds. Which, I can only assume, was us in the intro. Sorry about that, prince, but it appears our lineage is the one that has caused you so much suffering. So right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and find a hundred gold bag and a chandelier, which actually helps us considerably. And then, I'm going to find a bit of a weird room here. What is in this room? Can we see? Oh, there's a chest at the top here, if we can manage to get through everything without being hit. Looks to be fairly simple. And another hundred gold. We are just spoiled today. It's pretty incredible. There we go. Now if I just wait until right after this passes, there we go. Should have just enough time to get here. And onto the chest. Wonderful. Lots of extra gold. This is a great first run for us. Gotta say, we're getting lots of gold right off the bat, which is going to allow us to get some of those early buildings that we absolutely need to start getting our stats upgraded. Uh, including, of course, the very important blacksmith who gives us all of our equipment and the enchantress who gives us all of our runes. Now, these enemies are nothing but ranged, so if I just stay out of the range of their attacks, I should be fairly okay. Get another 190 gold from that room and I promptly drop onto some spikes. Not my brightest move of all time, but not exactly the end of the world either. I'm still trash at hitting platforms that go down though, so take that for what you will. Room filled with canvases, but not doomvases it appears. And a chest, and some spike balls. That was actually fairly easy to get across, but I think this room may very well spell, yep, the doom of our first adventure. Poor Surly. Barely killed any enemies, but he started his family off rich. So, Johannes, the legendary knight. The one who he started at, first time. But it appears that that's all we know of Sir Johannes, was that he was legendary and that he probably assassinated the king. So, what then shall we go with next? For anyone who's not played Rogue Legacy before or doesn't know how it works, well, it's a bit weird. It's a roguelike in the sense that you upgrade your uh, stats and you go through a admittedly fairly tough or multiple fairly tough areas and you have to defeat enemies and you upgrade your stats over time, but it's very different in that whenever your character dies, they die permanently and are succeeded by a member of their family who has somehow the exact same stats they do. So you also have a couple of different choices whenever you start a new character. In this case, we've got a barbarian or two knights. Our barbarian is a endomorph, so she doesn't get knocked back. 
And she has peripheral arterial disease, which means no foot pulse. Still don't know what that means, but whatever. Uh, we've got a knight with nostalgia. Misses the good old days. Who knows what that means? And the knight with baldness and a gay bald knight with scythes. <laughs> Alright, sure. Lady Stephanie, Sir Gouda, or Lady Faye? I'm thinking we're gonna go with Lady Stephanie here. And, of course, first things first, we're going to get the blacksmith. Who can get us all sorts of fun equipment and comes pretty much with the castle. So once we upgrade that, we can upgrade our health once, and then upgrade our knights into paladins. Paladins can use their block ability to stop an attack from pretty much any direction. Oh, that's what nostalgia means. Everything's in brown and gray scale. You know what? Fine. But what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and unlock the squire sword with the blacksmith and the squire helm. Going to get us off to a fairly solid start with more damage, more health, more pretty much everything. Then we're going to buy another health upgrade. We're now up to 140 on, well, generation 2. And, of course, the rest of our cash we're going to have to turn into Sharon, the gatekeeper, who demands all of your money whenever you first go into the castle. So you know what? That's fine. Reminiscing instead of building. Huh. It's pretty funny. Anyway. Wait, reminiscing? That doesn't mean it'll be the same layout of castle as... Oh, no, wait. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that it'll be the same castle at all. Okay, I was about to say, that'd be pretty powerful if you could get the same castle without using the architect for the castle to lock it down. But it does not appear to be the case. Everything's just in that brown and gray style of the first ancestor. So, naturally, one of our first goals on any playthrough of this sort is going to be getting as much cash as we possibly can. Oh, this is a new room. Seems fairly simple, though. Oh. Right as I say that, of course, I get hit. And the circus! Oh, the carnival. Wonderful. Let's play. One shot, free of charge. Succeed if you give it a nice reward. Ten daggers to destroy eight targets. Sure, we'll do it. Now, what you want to do is you want to wait till your target gets out to its point, and then you want to hit the target correctly. Like, you might think the target is going to bounce around diagonally. That's not the case. They always fly out to the same line, and they just get generally faster as you upgrade them a bit. Which, of course, means that my <laughs> dagger-tossing abilities are going to be pitifully insufficient to take down all these targets. Because I just do not have... Damn it! <laughs> I do not have the skills necessary to knock out these targets in a fashion that would get me the final reward. But that's perfectly fine, since I can manage to take out these targets at least somewhat. Oh, come on. Why am I so bad at this? Goodness. Alright, free 40 gold, and of course it's on the far end of the arena with two knives left. Hmm. Give it a shot. Oh, so close. And that's it. Ten knives gone. Couldn't even hit eight targets. Good luck with the rest of the castle. You know what? Screw you, buddy. I can do just fine with the rest of the castle. Oh, bad move, bad move. Went too late to get through that area, but you know what, that's fine. I can deal with too late. I can deal with a little bit of missing health. I'll find it somewhere. Make it up to you. I'll show those guys. Very just objective, take no... What the hell is this? <laughs> Hello, sir. You're a new enemy. I've never encountered you before. You are an interesting- oh my god, what the hell is this? I'm getting out of this room before I die to some weird mace-swinging assholes. Oh my goodness, what is- This entire castle! Oh my god, if you fail a fairy chest room, the architect can give you a second chance. That's fine, but... Goodness, I don't know if I want to try that again. Okay, so we have Tourette's EDS. You're very flexible. I have no idea what that is. Stereo blind, I know. And a Tourette's Ectomorph Mage. So, two of my least favorite characteristics. Ectomorph and Mage. Tourette's I could care less about. But let's see what EDS does. Maybe that allows us to get into the same little slots as, um... Dwarfs? Dwarves? That, that would be pretty helpful if it allows me to get into the, uh... Dwarf passages without actually... Being a dwarf but very flexible. I wonder what that could possibly mean. 
I mean, it doesn't seem to do anything immediately. I can't see anything that's obvious. The stereo blindness, of course, whenever we turn around, it'll be like, you're playing Paper Mario or something of that sort. You'll just turn around and boom, there it is. You're, you're a piece of paper-sized thing. Now, my goal for this run-through is to get at least 20, or 200, rather, gold, which will allow me to get the vo the double jump rune from the spellcaster on this run through. Sorry, focusing. <laughs> no commentary. Had to briefly focus there, and I've already found the boss of the castle. Dare I try to take down the boss on my third life with 112 HP? Oh, 126. Well, obviously, now I'm perfectly ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Kyder, the Gatekeeper. This asshole eye will make sure that we cannot get through a lot of this place until we take him out. Additionally, his arena has been changed somewhat since beta. The edges are no longer simply corners. They are, in fact, spike traps. So if you thought this guy was a jerk before, we'll get ready for a whole new class of asshole behavior. Now, Kyder is level 30, a significant upgrade from the level 24 he was in the beta, which means that we are going to be dealing slightly less damage to him, he is going to have slightly more HP, and he's just generally going to be a bit harder to defeat. Luckily, if you know his attack patterns, it is entirely possible to get around him with a little bit of luck with regards to his attack patterns. Because sometimes he'll use the random attack, sometimes he'll use the spinning eye attack, which is going to be trouble if it fires the wrong way, but luckily he's been tracking with me for most of this fight, so I think I might be able to defeat him on my second run here, which would be amazing, because whenever you defeat a boss, it gives you stats and a considerable amount of gold. And when I say considerable, I mean considerable. My goal was to get 200, I am now 1900 gold strong, 2080 gold strong, sorry. And we got... 15 increased vitality. That's pretty boss. I'm okay with that. We warp out Mega Man style. Kyder is defeated, and we are now at the warp outside of his gate. Now, naturally, we're not going to be able to move on to the next area quite yet. We're still way too weak for that sort of thing. But the fact that we were able to defeat Kyder on our second run through is quite incredible. Though I did die immediately afterwards. <laughs> So, oh my god, the enemy's defeated screen. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so Kyder <laughs> appears as a uh, nice little giant eyeball on the enemy's defeated screen, along with a single blue wisp. <laughs> so with that, ten minutes in, <laughs> do I end the first episode there? I mean, I can't imagine us doing more to be more impressive this episode. You know what? Sure, we'll end the first episode there. This is Rogue Legacy, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, and here's to a fun adventure.